Hi guys, my name is Rishikesh Moore and I am from IIT Bombay. Today we are going to be looking at this very interesting topic of numerical methods, which is a part of math, which is uh, is covered in mathematics. So uh, to start off with numerical methods, uh, we are going to be looking at bisection method. So before explaining what bisection method is, let's uh, talk about what numerical methods are in general and how relevant they are in today's day. All right. So numerical methods are a very practical application of mathematics. They find uses throughout different fields of engineering, especially where, uh, especially when you are trying to assimilate uh, experimental results. So, like suppose you get a differential equation uh, uh, with uh, initial boundary conditions, you know, and so on and so forth. And uh, suppose you want to numerically integrate it or numerically differentiate it. So, to solve uh, differential equations throughout engineering, in mechanical engineering, civil engineering. And surprisingly, chemical engineering, yes, uh, there are uh, time dependent and time independent uh, Schrodinger equations in quantum mechanics which cannot be solved exactly. So, those differential equations need to be approximated, and those are done using numerical methods. So, to start off, let me show you uh, where it's used. So, we are looking at a very popular problem fx equals to 0. This is nothing but finding the root of any function. And it's not a special problem, it's the same, it's the same or equivalent as solving fx equals to alpha. And uh, to start this, we are going to be using the bisection method. So before looking at bisection method, let's look at the uh, corresponding theorem, the intermediate value theorem. I'm sure you have uh, heard about this in some form in 11th or 12th. So what it basically says is that for a, uh, for a continuous function defined in the interval a to b and uh, mapped onto the real numbers, uh, if f of a times f of b is negative, then there is a c which lies between close bracket a and b such that f of c is 0. Now, what does this mean? All this means is saying that, that we have a continuous function. Let me draw it, draw it for you guys. All it means is we, all we are saying is suppose there is a, there is b and there is a continuous function and f of a, f of a and f of b, all the intermediate, intermediate value theorem says is that if this function is continuous and if f of a and f of b lie on different sides of the x axis, then there has to exist one c lying between a and b where f of c is 0. So that will give us the root. So this is a very important theorem and it's straightforward and quite intuitive to understand. So what the bisection method does is it keeps on approximating uh, f of a and f of b. Uh, it keeps on uh, taking new values of a and b. Uh, not exactly. We will see how, how it actually works. Uh, it continuously halves the subintervals where we are looking for the root and then it locates the half containing the root. So what, what how we start is uh, we set a1 as a. So basically we have iterations of a1, b1, and b1. Uh, so a and b are my start, a is my starting endpoint, uh, is, is my starting uh, point, and b is my ending point, and p is defined as a midpoint. So p1 is equal to a1 plus b1 over 2. So, and then what we do is, if uh, we check what is the value of the function at p1. So, if the value of function at p1 is 0, then well and good, we have found our root. But if not, then what we do is we check if f of p1 uh, and f of a1 have the same sign or not. So, if they have the same sign, uh, we cannot, if they have the same sign, that must mean that f of p1 and f of b1 will have the different signs. And that, using intermediate value theorem, guarantees that there is a root there. So, we limit our subinterval to that section. And this is how it's done. Uh, don't worry about it. It, it. If it looks very algebraic and mathematical, uh, this should paint a clearer picture. Uh, so here are our starting points, a1 and b1. And we take f of a and f of b. And uh, clearly you can see they are on the opposite sides. Then we take a, their midpoint, which is p1. Then uh, we can see that, f of, uh, that a1 and, uh, f of a1 and f of p1 uh, lie on opposite sides, which must mean that there is a root between them, which is guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. So now we take their midpoint again, which is which comes out to be p2. Then we see that f of a1 and f of p2 are on the same side. So what we do 
is v uh, take the root to be between f of p2 and f of uh, to be between p2 and p1 guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem and we keep on divide keep on divide divide these sub intervals until we find a satisfactory root now to, like uh, let's solve an example so that it becomes clearer so f of x equals x square minus 2 defined on 1 1 to 2 so f is defined like this 1, 1, 2, 2, So, uh, we already know that the root is uh, square root of 2, but to get it using uh, bisection method, let's solve it. So, what we first do is, we first make an initial, uh, so we have to find the midpoint first. So, a, R, a in this case is 1 and b in this case is 2, which means that b in this case is 1 plus 2 over 2 which is 1.5. Now if we see what f of p is, f of p is 1.5 squared minus 2 which is 0.25 which is positive. Now if you see that f of a here is minus 1 which is negative and f of b here is 2 which is positive. Now uh, since f of p is positive and f of a is negative, we know that the root must lie between a and p. So now we take the midpoint of 1 and a and p which is uh, so we call it p2 equals 1 plus 1.5 over 2 which is 1.25 and we repeat the same process we calculate what f of p2 is and f of p2 is 1.25 squared minus 2 which would be yes you guessed it it's negative uh, no actually it's positive Let me get back to you. So, yes, so it is positive. So now we know that uh, P1 and P2 must lie on the same sides. P1 and F of P1 and F of P2 lie on opposite sides, which means that the root must lie between P1 and P2. So if you keep on repeating this procedure, if you keep on taking uh, multiple iterations, we are guaranteed. Uh, that at some large n, like at some large n, pn, it will tend to 1.414, like whatever root 2 is. Obviously, we will never get exact root 2 because we are dealing with uh, ra uh, rational numbers. We are taking midpoint, which is basically a fraction, and a fraction, and, I, and we know that the root is an irrational number, and an irrational number can never be expressed as a form of a upon b. Right? So, we will never get exactly root 2, but we will get quite a good answer for root 2. And this is, in fact, uh, you can approximate a root to using this method as well. So that is what the bisection method is, and we'll look at uh, we'll look uh, at different methods in the future slides. Thank you.